I've been waiting for this for a long time. I think these are two of the best that have ever entered the octagon. I'm ready. You're ready. As Big John would say, let's get it on. The Huntington Beach Bad Boy, 24 years old, 3-1 and one in the UFC. Bring on the den, and now he takes on the graduate of the den. On Frank Shamrock, Tito has said, I think that Frank is the best fighter pound for pound right now, but this should be my best test. I will perform well. I think this will be the best fight of the century. I couldn't agree with him more. And there's Tito, great, great stand-up skills. And what he's really done is been able to avoid submission. And I'm looking at a guy running around in bare feet. I've been told that he's been training some kickboxing, and I think that's why he took the shoes off. John Lover in his corner, along with John Spencer. Here he is, the middleweight champion of the world, Frank Shamrock. Angelina, Tsuyoshi Kasaka, and Maurice Smith. He's been working out with the Stanford wrestling team from San Jose, California. 26-year-old champion, 4-0 in the UFC, Frank Shamrock. Well, Frank is a submission master, a versatile striker who's really been working hard on both leg kicks and his punching ability. And Frank never seems to get tired inside the octagon. Tale of the tape should include one thing verbally. Frank Juarez Shamrock, as he is still appealing towards his own identity. 26 and 24, 5, 10, 6, 2. Watch for the reach of Tito Ortiz, and that was his weigh-in weight at 199. He's about 215. There's a definitive weight advantage for Tito Ortiz. Just quiet for one second. There is anticipation in the house tonight. There is anticipation for this matchup. This is what it's all about. Here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come. The moment of truth has arrived. This is the main event of the evening. This five round middleweight bout will determine the UFC middleweight champion of the world. Remember, both of these men have entered the octagon as true warriors, and they both know that only one will leave a champion. Let's begin with the fighter standing to my left. He is a submission fighter with a UFC record of three and one. He is a veteran of UFC 13, UFC 18, and UFC 19. Standing six feet, two inches tall, weighing in at 199 pounds. He is the number one UFC contender for the middleweight crown. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. with a UFC record of 4-0. He is a veteran of Ultimate Japan, UFC 16, Knight of Champions, and Ultimate Brazil. Standing five feet, 10 inches tall, weighing in at 198 pounds. He's fighting out of San Jose, California. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the four-time undefeated, undisputed, has come to a close and now it is time for Big John McCarthy to yell out those four famous right, words. Go. UFC Middleweight Championship, are you ready? Are you ready? Let's get it on! I am tingling here. I, 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 I love both these athletes. It's going to be hard to pick a winner. 
And right away, Shamrock kicks. And this is what I thought might happen, is that Tito might catch the leg to bring him down, but he wants to go stand up, and there, you go. there it'll be. Tito wants to test the stand up. Frank obliges him. We saw Frank with great stand up the last time he was inside the octagon against John Lober. They've been waiting a long time to entangle. Respect, but no love lost. Frank immediately turning the face his opponent, trying to get in a half guard. Ortiz delivers some shots. And he is going to allow, I would think, Shamrock up again. Shamrock trying to work the legs from the bottom, and now they're back up on their feet. Tito Ortiz, former sparring partner of Tank Abbott, against Frank Shamrock. Almost got the leg caught again. Well, he's prepared. I mean, he's done some kickboxing. He wanted to learn how people kick and what he could do with it. So he anticipated Shamrock shooting on him, kicking him. Oh, look at the flexibility and mobility of Shamrock. Oh, Shamrock spinning out of that. He is such a... So he was looking for a submission there. He's trying to tie up an arm. He is so flexible and at the same time mobile in the guard. Very active athlete. Does he move his hips there to try to gain position, Jeff? Exactly. That's exactly what he was doing. He nailed the arm. He just couldn't set the position to lock it up. I mean, he shot Kevin Jackson in Japan setting the submission. Now Tito's going to work the ribs, and Frank checks off to his corner and Maurice Smith. And that might be Tito's biggest weakness, is he tries to stalemate and avoid the submissions. Frank's a master of them. So if Frank can keep this fence, active guard fence, going, he might be able to catch Tito in transition. Most people all attack right, you turn, turn, with a one-move burst, there and that's go. all. Frank attacks good, you with good. a constant direction where he's always moving and waiting to see your reaction and trying to anticipate. And when he does anticipate correctly, he tries to set up the submission again. This one is slated for five rounds, five All minutes right, now each. Push away, Frank. Okay, Middleweight right. championship, okay. first round. Shamrock and Ortiz. Go under guard, Frank, under guard. Get him off you. Get him off you, Frankie. It'll become tactical at times. And remember Shamrock, he's bumped up to 198. Head, but still he gets away about 15 pounds. He, he jokingly got on the scale and started emptying things out of his pockets. But he was fully clothed at 198. Frank's philosophy is always to go out and give 100%. He doesn't stop, he doesn't rest, he just goes, goes, and goes. And look at him, he's just always moving. He may not get up, but Tito spends a lot of energy trying to keep him down, and that's what I think Frank wants to do. He wants to test Tito's shape. Now he has said about Tito, he's a big, strong wrestler, and he, he said he didn't see much else out of Tito, but Tito seemed to be happy to try to punch with him early. We've seen Tito throw some good punches. Now, Tito felt that his stand-up ability is equal to Frank's, so he wanted to test that. I'm sure he doesn't feel his submission skills are equal to Frank's, but he feels that he can avoid submissions successfully. Tito trying to work inside Frank Shamrock's car. Now Shamrock with the close guard. He's working the outside guard, unlike TK and Maurice, who use that TK guard, which is a bit different. Frank's got incredible flexibility. Savvy, too, using his feet to try to adjust to get his head off the fence. This is a position for a ground and pound specialist. You want to be able to have a stationary target to throw punches at, and if you're bound up against the fence, that's what you become. Oh, open man. But still, is Shamrock trying to listen to the advice of Maury Smith? Shamrock trying to work up to his feet. And Ortiz delivers a couple of shots. Shamrock keeps him close, though. Well, Ortiz is leaning on There's him, holding him to the fence. Now we'll see what kind of... Now he's going to keep him down. Ortiz impressive here in the first round. He's keeping the champion down on the mat and trying to work ground and pound tactics. Shamrock very active in his guard position. He's forcing Tito Ortiz to spend a lot of energy, and this may be something he wants to do, thinking that he might go into deficit later into the fight.
This crowd is loving it. And this is a five round fight, a championship fight, a title bout will go five, five minute rounds. So there's lots of time to play with. Certainly that was not a dominant round by any means by either fighter, but it did look like the edge went to Tito Ortiz. Early in the first period, Frank trying a kick, Tito catching the leg, and when Frank tried to pull the leg back, lost his balance, Tito chose to keep it on the feet. And here Frank got behind, excuse me, Tito got behind Frank, and when he finally dropped him down, Frank turned to face him to try to get him in the guard. And this was that one attempt at Tito's arm, Frank trying to hook it up, but Tito able to block it and get away, but look how quickly Frank returns to guard position to protect himself. If there was any doubt in Tito's mind that he could truly hang with Frank, is that doubt gone now? No, not yet. Conditioning is gonna be the factor. Conditioning reigns supreme. If you take a break, we saw Kevin Jackson take a momentary break against Jerry Bolander, and bang, he got submitted. Nobody can take a break now in the octagon. No one. And these two guys are good. Whoa, Frank coming up high. Part of the alliance. And I know he learned that from Maury Smith. We haven't seen Frank throw a lot of kicks. We've seen him throw some punches. Now he's trying some different things, working the game. And down he goes again. And he doesn't mind this. That's Frank right. does not mind this being on his back. He may have given up a score of a takedown, whatever points the judges feel that is worthy of him. They, they take down his score. But he is not afraid to be down here. He likes it down here. I loved what he had to say in his bio. People get frightened from what they don't know. He has been in this position so many times with his partners in the Lions Den. He knows what to do here. So he is always unafraid. And Frank is a risk taker. And those that take risks find big rewards. You can find unsuccessful events happening, but you can also find that big reward. And that's what champs do. They take risks when they need to. Crowd is on their feet here in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Tito is Tito is not having his way with Frank. He is finding it difficult to work through Frank Shamrock's guard, and he's spending a lot of energy down there. Frank continues, excuse me, continues to be active in that guard. It's going to really put a test on Tito Ortiz's cardio. I think for, this is a, a ploy by Frank Shamrock. I really feel he's he feels he's in better shape, better cardio, better stamina, and that he wants to test Tito Ortiz. Well, Frank has always said, and it is a direct quote from our champion, condition is my best submission hold. Now, Tito Ortiz has a wrestling background, and he appears to be in great shape. Maury Smith, part of the alliance, in the corner of Frank Shamrock. Lober and Spencer in the corner of Tito Ortiz. Look how Frank accepts that power by Tito Ortiz. He just coils up and accepts it. See, Tito tried to strike there, and Frank just got the big arms in front and none delivered. This is what is the tactic of guard is. Even with the inactive tactic, it's to make the inactive guard, it's to make the top man spend energy. And thus far, that's exactly what Frank has done. Frank said he has never trained as hard as he has for this one. In a lot of different ways he's trained. He thinks it'll either be a very fast night, or he says, I am going to make it a very long one and beat the living stuff out of him. Not directly what he said. Those are some shots to the ribs of Frank Shamrock. Now, Tito seems to be coming a little more active now. Pressing here in Frank Shamrock's guard to try to get some scoring in. Again, I wonder though, Jeff, conditioning aside, does Tito's confidence get better and better as the fight goes on? I think the two go together. As Pat Militich said earlier, you know, if you are frustrated, it certainly accelerates how quickly you fatigue. Not only mentally, where you start to make mistakes mentally, but also physically because you're unsure of what to do and you're all bound up with energy and you don't know how to spend it. You wind up spending a lot of it inefficiently. He's doing, he's doing good. Tito's working hard, but he's not getting a lot of scoring in, though he is controlling the action. See how quickly, though, once he slid, he grabbed Frank and kept him close again. 
Smart move there, and he does consider himself a submission fighter. And Frank is constantly communicating with his corner. He'll look over there and say something, and immediately Maurice Smith passes the information on, and they come up with something to give back to Frank. And Tito's got wrestling skills, as you know, two-time junior college champion. And Maurice Smith again on looking. 40 seconds remaining in round two. Busy fight so far, but neither fighter able to damage on, the Frank, other at this 30 point. Seconds, 30 seconds, Frank. 30 seconds. Tito Ortiz scored a takedown in this round. All right. Other than that, there's not been a whole lot of scoring. Just a lot of motion, a lot of positioning, a lot of tactics, but nobody really coming clean with effective scoring. Frank, a couple of shots. Eight seconds left. Frank trying to lift up his opponent, Tito Ortiz. Now he works the back. They both continue to go. It's all right to the back. You can't be the back of the head or neck. And Tito complained that Frank did something to him, but John McCarthy saying it's legal. I think he tried to punch him or elbow him there. Ortiz looks very calm and confident in this corner. Same as Frank Shamrock. They're both standing. Frank shifting leg from leg, but head down, just trying to relax. Trying to remain focused. At the end of the round here, a lot of quick flurrying, both by Shamrock and Ortiz. There was a momentary low, but watch how quickly here Frank will pull his hips out from under. He nods his head to his corner. He's communicating with his corner. He'll throw a punch, bang, and now he's going to come up. Nice job there by Shamrock to get to his feet, but Tito continued hanging on to the legs, and this is what killed Paul Jones earlier. Hanging on down below, carrying your own and your opponent's body weight sucks up a lot of energy. But as I said, Tito looks very fresh in his corner, very composed, as does our champion, Frank Juarez. Are you ready? Let's get Shamrock. It on. Come on, doing good. Now, Tito said he's got some stand up, but he knows that Frank's most dangerous skill is submission. But he doesn't think that Frank can out wrestle him. That was which a nice is still his dangerous was, skill. Right. And there was a nice inside out kick by Shamrock. Now he's coming back from the outside. Third round. Oh, a high bad. kick again by Frank Shamrock. That's an element we haven't seen inside the octagon from Frank before. There's a knee that connected. And down it goes again. Now, interestingly, I wonder how the judges will do that. They kind of, Frank tried to take down and then went down to the mat here, and they're all bound up. See, Frank will try to shift his hips here again, won't he, Jeff? Yeah, he's going to try to pull that left leg back through. Try to get to a half guard. He'll keep it here because he can keep Tito from improving his position. He can't really get good leverage on any of his strikes. And there, now he'll try to turn the face. Side mount by Tito Ortiz. Really what we call a headlock or an over-under pinning combination. But the position he's in, he has no weapons to really strike with. All he can do is try to smother, get a neck crank going. Frank was working the backside of Tito, and Tito snuck through and got a right. Now a short jab. Yes, it was. It was a quick punch coming in. I really don't know how much power it had on it. Without any legs underneath it, it's an all-arm punch. There have been chants of Tito. There are now chants of Shamrock. We have nearly reached the midway point of our 5 times 25, 25 minute middleweight championship matchup between Frank Shamrock and Tito Ortiz. Whoa, he gave him his back, and Tito not moving up. Frank immediately going back to guard. There's the true athleticism and technique of Frank Shamrock. To his credit, Ortiz did not bite on that open opportunity. Frank was looking for him to try to move up, and that's something Frank wants because he can scramble. Tito, as he said, not a master of submissions, but I can certainly stalemate him and avoid them. And he's relying on ground and pound tactics here. A 
He's been the dominant as far as least up, up on top, down on bottom, but yet Frank has also stayed very busy. Oh, yeah, Frank's very active. His guard position, he's constantly moving, constantly putting his feet in, constantly sitting up like this. And once again, he gives him his back. Tito riding him like a wrestling match right now. And they're on their feet. Under two remains in the third. Frank Shamrock gets cut, left side of his face. Oh, that one got him. The jab, a big bob from the outside. Frank with an uppercut and a combination. And Tito's really breathing hard here, but he's still a great takedown artist. He gets him down. Let's see how active now Ortiz will be or whether or not he's starting to fatigue. They both exchange good punches there, both deliver points. Ortiz is going to move Shamrock's head towards the fence and try to bind him up. But Ortiz has slowed down here. There you go, right there. Put your head on the other side. Put your head on the other side. Right if Shamrock truly is looking for cardio superiority, he wants to push now while Tito seems to be taking a break, resting a little bit, not being very active in Frank's guard. In fact, he's just hugging down by the head, locking his hands and staying there. A lot of time remains here in the third round. Just under a minute now. Remember, Frank tried to finish strong in the second round, too. Leave that indelible last impression in the judge's mind. That's gamemanship there. And Frank and Tito both have a world of experience, but Frank has competed overseas for years as well in Japan. And he understands the scoring game. Former King of Pack Racing, 95, submission champ for the WKC. 20 victories, many of them overseas. Well, his whole evolution has been astonishing. One in the shadow of, of course, a great UFC fighter, Ken Shamrock. Then Ken Shamrock leaves and goes on to other endeavors, and Frank is now in charge of the Lions Den, where he feels he's babysitting, and it's impeding on his own personal progress as a fighter. He then leaves and forms the Alliance, and suddenly a Frank Shamrock middleweight champion is born. And from there, he then gets married. And as I said earlier, where will this metamorphosis take us? And he's even added his name, Juarez, his original name. Here, Frank Tito almost riding him in a wrestling position. Tried to go to his back and then eventually up onto his feet. And both of them, once they got to their feet, prodded the other. They wanted to see what each other had. And Frank, with a big overhand right, hits the shoulder. They trade knees. Uppercut by Shamrock. Uppercut by Ortiz. Excellent exchange. Just one punch. And you got to move to the line. Leon Tabs, our veteran cut man, veteran of the sport of boxing from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, working on the cut above Frank Shamrock's side. And Tito Ortiz trying to regain his oxygen during this one minute break as we are set for round number four. Use those knees and punches. The last time Frank fought, he beat that man. He's in the background in the white jacket, white hat, John Machine Gun Lober. Are you ready, Frank? Turn around. Ortiz working with Lober to try and improve his submission skills. And John Spencer working with him on Muay Thai. But any kick so far that have been thrown have been by Frank Shamrock. And he almost gave his leg. He doesn't mind that. As long as the kick scores, he doesn't mind that. Right? And those kicks are starting to leave an impression on Tito Ortiz. They're nice. Another nice inside-out kick. And I think those are good because they can trip you up as well as cause some damage. Nice left stiff jab. And Ortiz's output has slowly dwindled. Yeah. And Frank looks so white on his feet still. Yeah. That's not to say Tito's still not dangerous, a very dangerous fighter, but it's definite now that his output has started to dwindle. Frank feels it. And Frank is starting to close the distance on the striking here. He's getting right in tight with Tito now. Frank feels something, Jeff. He knows he needs to start pushing the fight hard. Taking the center of the ring. Tito working his way around the outside. To 
tactic always used by Big Brother Ken Shin. Come out, take the center of the ring. Now Shamrock had a cut on the side of his head, but it doesn't appear to be bleeding now. Good corner work by the champion. And like a racing crew, it's a team effort. Everybody's got to do their thing. And Shamrock now walking into Ortiz and striking, but it's now Tito's turn. He returns to the double leg and takes the champ down. And I think Tito was just waiting for that opportunity. And I believe Tito is now suffering from fatigue. We have not seen Ortiz fight this long in any fight. They're into it now, 17 full minutes. Three minutes left in this round with one round remaining. Longest fight of Frank Shamrock's UFC career was the overtime submission win over Jeremy Horn. 16.30 was the duration of that fight. Now that we've gone to the five rounds of 25, 25 total minutes, five inside, times five, Greg, Jeff, inside. we get into a situation where conditioning does go a lot longer than it could have in the past. Except when we add those no time limit bouts or half an hour time limit bout, those were the longest bouts we ever had in the UFC. Shamrock never had to experience that, nor did Ortiz. It goes all the way back to the Gracies, Shamrocks, Seven great champions of the past. There has never been another middleweight champion other than the man right now working from his guard again, Frank Shamrock. He has been our only middleweight champion. And Tito again able to keep Frank down, but Frank is forcing him to burn a lot of energy just to hold him down. And once again, we see Tito not using any kind of punching, not using any kind of striking, just hanging out. Remaining in round number four. And again, Shamrock starting the move, trying to be active again. Tito hanging on tight to Shamrock's head. And Frank always works for inside control. He doesn't like to keep. Ortiz's arms too close to his head without an arm somewhere laced in between. Those are all missing. Every one of those elbows missed. They're right in front of us at a clean view of it. Each one missed. And a reversal. And now we're going to find out what kind of stamina Tito Ortiz has. Shamrock trying to end it. Shamrock delivered shot. They're toe to toe. And Ortiz shoots it again. Frank tried to end it. He certainly did. He got up, but that's a huge burst to put on late in the fight. And how much did that take out of Tito Ortiz? And they're in tight there, and he's got him over. Shamrock might go back to it. 15 seconds. Working Ortiz still. And he's and down. He's over. What a gutsy performance by the champ. Shamrock felt conditioning was going to be a factor. He stayed active in his guard throughout this fight. He constantly made Tarantino Ortiz work, and it eventually paid off very late in the fight. But certainly his stand-up skills have improved. Shamrock able to deal with Tito Ortiz on his feet, unafraid of taking risks. And because of that, he found that big reward we talked about. Frank Shamrock, the greatest under 200 pound fighter in the mixed martial arts world. This is where he turns it around. Shamrock constantly moving here. He wanted to continue. 
to find ways to make Tito expend energy, and he never rested on the bottom. He never just stayed on his back. He wanted to continue to move, and here you see him doing that, and he eventually came up, and once he got up here, I felt that he really had to press the fight, and he did. He stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tito, and Tito resorted to what he needed, and that was a takedown. But in doing so, he also got locked into a somewhat of a guillotine choke, and by that, I think it started draining Tito quickly, and right then and there when he started punching, and you could see Tito's hands tapping the mat, Tito conceded. He submitted to the champ. And that is where, as you said, he lost the oxygen right there as Frank Shamrock victorious and continues to be our middleweight champion. What a fight, and look at the respect shown by Tito Ortiz as we get the official word on this, our featured matchup, the marquee matchup, and there can only be one champion. And for that announcement, here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner by tap out at four minutes, 50 seconds of the fourth round for the winner and still UFC middleweight champion of the world, Frank Lawrence. a very busy octagon is Jeff Blatnick. Partner? First of all, Frank.